Jason Bennett and Terry Harris were married and had two children, a boy named John Paul Bennett and a girl named Lacey Bennett. Everything was going well with the couple, until in early 2020, after 14 years together, they decided to divorce. Less than three months after the divorce, Terry, then 35 years old, signed up for a dating app where she met a 31-year-old man named Damien Bendel. The two exchanged a few messages and then arranged to meet. It is said that they met for a few days, until in early April 2020, they started a relationship. Already in the first months of this relationship, Damon was quite controlling and sometimes aggressive, but despite that, it seemed that Terry didn't lose interest in him. In fact, she would have even stated several times to acquaintances that she wanted to marry him and have children. Damon was an ex-con and was paroled in March 2020, one month before starting his relationship with Terry. The woman knew about her new partner's past. He was always very clear about everything he had done in his life. And even though she knew everything, Terry apparently didn't care and said that he deserved a second chance. Things between the new couple were getting so serious, the woman even introduced Damon to her parents and was clear with them about the fact that the man was an ex-convict. Obviously, at first, the woman's parents were reluctant, but Terry convinced them, saying that Damon was a changed man and that he wanted to have a new life with her. But Terry's mother noticed the way Damon treated her daughter and how Terry was needy and in love with Damon to the point of not being able to see how much the man hurt her. Terry's mother sensed that this was not going to end well and spoke to her daughter about it, but Terry ignored her. The woman's mother then gave her daughter an ultimatum. Either she ended the relationship with Damon or never needed to speak to her again. And even then, Terry ignored her once again. Terry had made a choice, a choice called Damien, a choice that would tear two families apart. After one year of relationship, in April 2021, Terry moved to a new house with her two children from the previous relationship. John Paul, who was 13 at the time, and Lacey, who was 11 years old. The family settled in the town of Sheffield in the metropolitan county of South Yorkshire, north in England. Damon also moved into this house with them in order to build a new family. Neighbors who witnessed the family move said from the beginning they saw that something very wrong was happening, as Damon seemed to drag the furniture in the house roughly, almost as if he was being forced to do that, very upset and new humored. Over the next few months, the neighbors noticed that the family lived in constant control by Damien and could also see that Terry seemed to be afraid of him, but even so, she insisted on maintaining their relationship. Damon would have even flirted with other women in front of Terry, but then again, Terry wouldn't have minded and still claimed she wanted to get married and have kids with him. In addition to all this, Damon was an addict who used several heavy narcotics. He didn't work and was supported by Terry, and he still used to sell various belongings from the house to support his addiction, including a laptop from his partner. The man also boasted on being a very dangerous criminal, and said that even the police were afraid of him. On September 18, 2021, a Saturday, Terry built a tent on the sidewalk of the house for her children, John and Lacey, which they would use to sell candy in order to raise funds for an institution to help fight cancer. A friend of Lacey's named Connie Gent also went to participate in a candy sale, and at the end of the day, she called her parents asking them to let her sleep over at her friend's house, and the parents consented. The next morning, September 19, at 7 a.m., on a Sunday morning, Damon would have called his mother and then went to buy tobacco. At 7.26 a.m., Damon's mother called the police saying that her son had tried to take his own life with a bladed weapon. At 7.38 a.m., Damon used Connie's cell phone and called 911 for an ambulance, saying he had taken someone's life. As soon as the officers arrived at the scene, they saw Damon sitting on the sidewalk outside the house. The man was very calm, and when asked what had happened, 
Damon confessed he had taken the lives of everyone in the house. The police were incredulous with what they heard and thought that the man was making it all up because he was under the influence of some drug. They then asked Damon to give his full name, age, date of birth, and where they were to see if the man was conscious or not. After Damon answered everything accurately, it was clear to the cops that he was aware of everything. Thus, the police decided to enter the house to check what had actually happened, and while one of the police officers was responsible for watching Damon outside, the others entered the residence. As soon as they entered, the police were faced with one of the worst scenes of their lives. There were four badly injured bodies, some even almost unrecognizable, and blood everywhere. It was a real scene from a horror movie. Next to the bodies, officers found a claw hammer, which was later discovered to be the murder weapon. Damien Banda was immediately arrested and taken to the police department. Forensics were called in, and the whole house was scrutinized, and what emerged from the scene analysis and Damien's confession was one of the most shocking crimes in Britain. Connie, who was at the house for the sleepover, would have said goodnight to her parents via messaging app at 8.25 p.m. After that, everyone would have gone to sleep. That day, Damon returned home around 8.30 p.m. He was under the influence of narcotics, and he would have stayed out of the house all day using drugs. As soon as he got home, Damon took a claw hammer and went to his room, where Terry was sleeping. He hit the woman several times, and according to the autopsy report that was carried out later, there were at least 10 blows to the head and face, but even so, the woman was still alive, but too injured to do anything. After hitting Terry, Damon went to the room where his stepchildren and their friend were. He took the three and took them to the room where Terry was, so that they could look at the woman's condition. Then, he took Lacey, his stepdaughter, and did absurd things to her in front of everyone in the room, and when he got tired of it, he took her life with a hammer. As I already mentioned, Terry was still alive and was forced to watch everything that was happening to her daughter without being able to do anything to stop it. John and Connie tried to run from Damien, but the men went after them and managed to catch one in the living room and the other hiding in the bathroom. After he had done all that, Damien changed his clothes, grabbed an Xbox that belonged to one of his stepchildren, and went to his drug dealer to exchange for narcotics. A few hours later, he returned home in a taxi and told the driver in a mocking tone that he had a nice, quiet evening with his family. The case shocked the entire city, especially the neighbors, as the neighborhood where the family lived was considered quiet and safe, and nothing of the kind had ever happened in the region. The city of Sheffield went into mourning, and the school where Terry's children and their friend study was closed for three days. During the time he was in police custody at the police department, Damon confessed to the entire crime during his interrogation, which was even recorded. He had already confessed to the crime in the call he made to the emergency, and also to the first police officers who went to the family home. However, the next day, following the advice of his lawyers, he recanted and pleaded not guilty. During the following months, Damien's lawyers tried to argue that he would have suffered a blow to the head months before, and that would have left him with sequels that caused a mental disorder that made him commit the crimes. They also argued that due to this blow to the head, Damien had no recollection of the day of the crime. In addition to all of this, the lawyers said that Damien was taking strong medication to treat his trauma, and that this would have driven him even more out of his mind. However, subsequent examinations proved that Damon had not suffered any kind of blow to the head, and this defense argument was dismissed by the prosecution. Lawyers tried to plead insanity, but more tests were done and it was determined that Damon was completely sane. In December 2022, Damon Bandle's trial at Nottingham Crown Court began. The trial was attended by several of the victim's relatives, as well as some of Damon's relatives. Due to the huge impact of the case, it was widely covered by the country's media, and a large part of the region's population was watching this trial. In court, 
The coroner stated that the victims were brutally attacked and that there was a lot of bodily waste strewn throughout the house. The doctor also said that Damien's stepdaughter was the one who suffered the most, since before having her life taken away, she was still a victim of forced intercourse. According to forensics, there were male fluids belonging to Damien all over Lacey's body. Another fact presenting during the trial was that Damien actually had five victims and not four. That's because Terry, Damien's partner, was a few weeks pregnant. The man's defense tried to argue that he was happy about becoming a father for the first time and that he and Terry were a happy, problem-free couple. However, witnesses, including family members and friends of the couple, told the court that Damon didn't seem happy and that the entire time he was aggressive, possessive and controlling towards Terry. A neighbor of the couple even testified, saying that Damon had already taken the lives of dogs and cats in the neighborhood. The defense also tried to argue that Damon was remorseful for the crime and that every day he regretted what he had done. However, the entire time he was in trial, Damon didn't show any kind of emotion. It was as if he didn't even care about his fate. With that, the jury that was present didn't believe that he really felt anything for the victims. Also during the trial, Damon's extensive criminal record was presented. The man had priors for burglary, grievous bodily harm, attempted robbery and arson. As it turns out, he was supposed to still be serving time for some of these crimes, but the probation officer responsible for evaluating Damien's case deemed him eligible for parole and released him shortly before he met Terry. That same officer was later fired because of this serious mistake, since Damien showed clear signs that he could not return to live in society so soon. At the end of the trial, Damon's defense lawyers were unable to argue or prove that he was out of his mind during the attack, or that he had forgotten the facts. Damon Bendel, 33 at the time, pleaded guilty to all charges. He was also found guilty by jury trial, and on December 21, 2022, Damon Bendel received the sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. After his sentence, the prosecution authorized the reopening of an archived process where Damon would be accused of forcing relations with a 13-year-old girl which would have occurred a few years ago. The crime had a huge impact across England and was considered one of the worst that ever happened in the country. On January 4, 2023, the National Council decided to demolish the house where everything happened. This pleased both family members and friends of the family, as well as the local neighbors, since the house was receiving frequent visits from many onlookers and people who wanted to contact the victim's spirits. According to the neighbors of the house, the demolition pleased them, as a lot of weird people were walking around the neighborhood. Jason Bennett, Terry's ex-husband and John and Lacey's father, was away when he was told what had happened. According to him, when he heard what had happened, he didn't want to believe, and when he understood that everything was real, his world collapsed. He said John was a wonderful and kind son, and his daughter Lacey was a golden-eyed, very loving girl who gave him a reason to live. Terry Harris' parents also spoke out after the crime. Terry was their only child, and her children were their only grandchildren. They said that with their departure, now the two in old age had no more family, no more daughter, and no more grandchildren to love, and would never have the chance in life again. Well, folks, that's it for today. Thanks for watching until the end. Best wishes, and I see you next time.